morning, everybody. Uh, really excited. Today is probably my favorite mindset class because it really helps us dial in what the real secret to real estate is, which is dominating our schedule and having a very simple, practical, usable schedule that we can have or that we can uh, put into place to have extraordinary results. So I, I, I'm really excited to show you all the things that we're gonna go through today. So let's jump in. Uh, a little bit of background on myself for those that don't know, I'm Brendan Bardick. Uh, I started out in real estate as a real estate assistant, became a buyer's agent on a team, uh, then became a, a listing agent on a team, then start, went out on my own, started my own team, um, you know, sold over 100 plus homes year after year as an individual agent. Uh, then started to build my real estate team, uh, which now is the number one real estate team in Denver uh, in the front range, and then ended up buying the real estate brokerage uh, that I currently have over 200 agents that are absolutely fantastic uh, that I get to work with and partner with every day. And so I've seen every piece probably of the real estate business. Uh, I can probably answer just about any question because I've seen it from all sides. But when we start out talking today about why this course is gonna to matter to you or why it should have an impact on you is because with these few techniques, it can literally change the course of your life. And as I started to <coughs> learn these, oh, sorry. Uh, Anna, can you just, there you go. Thank you so much. Um, so over the course of learning these techniques uh, has helped me to just have a, basically a better overall life and business. Uh, so I'm gonna jump into it. I'm gonna get right to the nuts and bolts. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. If there's anything that you want, use the chat box like Anna said. We like these to be interactive. Uh, if, you, if you have something on your mind that you wanna share or a thought, just let us know. Otherwise, we're gonna jump right in. So let's start out with let me get back here for a second to get this zoom going. So one of the thoughts is what is currently holding you back, right? So is there anything right now in your current schedule that's either standing in your way or that you are wanting to get past so you can either have more business, you can have more success, uh, you can have a better relationship with your, your loved ones, uh, whatever it is. So this class will be interactive. If you have pen and paper, I hope you do. I'd love you to write that comment down. What's standing in your way right now? What is that, that current? It, it could be something very small. It could be something massive. What's holding you back right now? So for me, and I'll just tell you a kind of personal story, it was, it was limited beliefs. It was that I had been told my entire life that I was, you know, our family was cursed. I was never going to be squat. I was going to end up in jail like my brother. You know, all these things that you're told as a kid or that you might have been affected with at some point, I had a lot of limited beliefs on what I thought I could accomplish because I had been told that for so long. So that was a big problem with me. And I'll, I'll tell you probably the most influential book that changed that mindset and it kind of sounds cheesy was Tony Robbins um, uh, book, which, which was really uh, an overall game changer for me that made me realize that, you know, those there were certain types of things that if I could develop personal development, that I could overcome those things and go on to have a, a decent life, a great life, right? So, so what's standing in your way right now? Now, to get past anything that's standing in our way, we're going to have to, and the reason I named the class Embrace the Suck, is we're going to have to consciously accept that there's gonna be extremely unpleasant things that we're going to have to do to make sure that we have forward progression, okay? So again, unpleasant things that we're gonna to need to overcome to make sure that we have forward progression. Now, looking at that, 
we're going to talk about some things that we can do, but it all comes back to just a simple mindset of saying, okay, instead of dreading these certain things, I'm going to take them head on. I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to drive through. But that sounds like it's really hard. It's really just little tiny little tweaks that we make that create these giant leaps that aren't that dramatic. They just seem that way at first. So embrace the suck, all right? So to do that, I've really, really have studied, been focus, focused on mastering the morning. And I know you hear this thing quite a bit or hear different things, or maybe you have, or maybe you hadn't. Morning mastery is everything. It is an absolute game changer. It, it gives you the ability to do what all the other people talk about doing that they wish they were going to do. Now, when you see this, this if you're looking at the slide and it says 5 a.m. to 6.15, okay? If you're looking at that and you're saying to yourself, hey, Brennan, there's no way. I've got kids to pick up from school. I've got this different thing. I've got all these things. We're going to talk about that. You don't have to do 5 a.m. to 6.15. There is no... Uh, prescription that's correct for every single person. I'm going to tell you what I do and what other people that I coach and work with do and the results that they've had. And then you can hopefully take maybe a piece, two piece, you know, a couple of different ideas from here and think about implementing them so that you can have what you want. All right. So with morning mastery, starting every single day with morning meditation. Now, meditation, diving into basically focus. That's all meditation is what I discovered. I, you know, I used to think it was this whole, you know, you know, I had to wear patchouli perfume and do all kind of weird chants and stuff. No, no, no. That's, I mean, you can do that, but that's not what the real meditation is. It's just quieting your mind and being able to silence all of the thoughts, all the traffic, all the drama, so you can have clarity on what matters to you most. And once you dive into that clarity, everything starts falling into place. So 10 minutes every morning, I, uh, I use a guided app, the Calm app that really helped me and they have all kinds of ways to teach you. There's different apps out there that can help you do, do this. Or you can just sit there for 10 minutes in dead silence and try not to let any thoughts enter your head. I always give this uh, example. You know what? I'm going to go off script here, which I know Anna loves when I do this. Uh, oh. um, so, so with everybody listening right now, I'll take you through a quick little exercise. And if you've been to some of my classes, I've taken you through this. So even if your screen's not on and don't do this if you're driving, right? So just close your eyes for just a second. Okay. So, I can see you, so just close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, envision a white egg in your mind. So clear out every single thought and try to envision, keeping your eyes closed, a single white egg in your mind. Okay, so you're looking at the egg, you can see the egg. Now, the test is, keeping your eyes closed, how long can you focus on that egg without another thought entering your head right now? Now, for some of you, go ahead and open your eyes. If you are still in deep trance and I'm impressed with you, so, that's the way that I've learned to start doing meditation is for me, it personally was about three seconds. I don't even know if I made it three seconds before that little guy told me, this is so stupid. Why am I looking at this egg? That's the first thought that came into my head. The second thought was I have this meeting at nine o'clock. The third thought was, and then it went on and on and on and on. So what you're trying to do with that exercise is go from three seconds to 10 seconds to 30 seconds to when you're so dialed in and you are just looking at that egg and there's nothing else surrounding it. There's no other, 
you know, you know, thoughts entered into your mind or any of these other, you know, I call them the, 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 you know, the drunk monkeys on your shoulder telling you that this, that, or the other. It's scientifically proven that for you, the, for the people that are able to have extreme focus and extreme clarity, that they accomplish more and live a happier life. So if we know that, right, and, and we know that to be true, and, and again, whatever you believe in or don't believe in, the problem is we don't believe it enough to implement it. We don't believe it enough to say, let's take away everything else on the mastery guide and just say, if I just did that for 10 minutes a day, would that have some sort of benefit to my life? So just think about that, right? Like it's those little, little things that go a long way. So jumping back in, so that's 10 minutes, okay? Then we go into morning affirmations. Tell yourself encouraging words to achieve goals to stay more calm and happy. Now, if you don't have any affirmations, we're gonna give you some of our favorites here today. And remembering that all I'm doing with an affirmation or visualization, I do affirmations and visualization, is I'm just telling my mind what I want it to believe. And then what it believes, it accomplishes. So Anna, what's, what's one of your favorite affirmations? You know, it's really basic, but it pushes me through a lot. Um, when I'm in a moment of second guessing myself, um, my affirmation is, I always choose courage. Hmm. No I matter what, right? Courage. Or I, I am fierce. I know they're silly, but they get me through a lot of those moments where I think, oh, I could just back off. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to push any harder. And those are the two that really push me through on a daily basis. Yeah, no, those are great ones. So you have to find your own, right? You have to find your own. And I wouldn't tell you, I am the least cheesiest person on earth. I would never tell you to do this if I didn't see the results from it. It works. That's all I can say. Do it. It'll work. Uh, so then five minutes of scripts. Okay. So script is everything in our industry. Now, I, you know, everyone that, you know, if you know me, I love scripts, dialogues, training, looking at all that. So in my meditation area, I have a script book there. I have scripts from every other company on earth. I, I study every piece to make sure I know what to say and how to say it that day. There's a script for everything, inspection, objection, pricing adjustments, um, uh, closing at the table, everything, everything is there. But if it's not practiced, not rehearsed and not internalized, it can't be monetized and it can't make you have better, deeper client relationships that, that are going to have lasting results. So scripts for five minutes, uh, then 10 minutes of thank you notes. So so I, uh, I, my goal every single morning is to write out two gratitude or thank you notes. And that's probably out of all, everything on this list, that's the one that I'm the most challenged with. And I'll be very honest. And it's not because I don't like thanking people. I can barely write. I have the handwriting of a, of a three-year-old. I have the spelling capacity of a seven-year-old. So it takes me to write two note cards without screwing it up making it look stupid, spell checking it on Google. Um, you know, you know, it takes me a while, but it's that important. That gratitude every morning is just as important to me as the person that I'm sending it to. And so maybe you start out with one a day, right? You start out with one card a day and work your way up. Uh, but to do this, you have to have a couple of things. You have to have your notes, your stationery there. You have to have the note cards. You have to have the stamps. You have to have the address. I prefer the address list printed out. It works a lot better for me. And I'm clear in the morning. There's not a hundred million things going on. And I just start thinking about, wow, who's done something amazing? Who's somebody that I really appreciate in my life? Who's just phenomenal? Who's somebody that maybe needs a pick me up right now that's going through a tough time? It's powerful. Okay. Uh, then exercise. So 20 minutes of exercise, go for a walk or jog, you know, start out 10 push-ups. heck, just do anything, right? Anything that you can possibly do. And all of this can be customized to what you need. I'm just giving you an example. Now, 
I do an hour of exercise, so my schedule is different than this. I actually start the clock at 4.30 to accommodate for, for more exercise because I need it, and, that, and that's what gets me going. So you can adjust this schedule to whatever, but I wanted to make it realistic for people that, that you know, wanted to jump in. So um, reading, right? So 15 minutes, fuel up with new ideas, pursue personal growth, obviously accomplishing that, and then YouTube, uh, 10 minutes. So, so with the, going back to the reading, a lot of this you can accomplish with an audible book. A lot of this you can accomplish if you have the book just sitting next to your meditation area. Dedicate yourself to five pages a day, 10 pages a day, whatever it is to get through it, not to get through it, but to make sure that you're doing it consistently. And then this is the one that people always kind of laugh about is YouTube. So YouTube is probably the greatest gift that the internet has ever provided the earth. Think about that. It's the greatest gift on earth. You can literally go to YouTube right now and learn anything. I'm talking anything. You can become a professional real estate agent. You can become a professional basket weaver. You can learn survival skills. You can learn video skills, camera skills. It's all there with the top people on earth handing it to you on a platter. So think about back to our earlier question, what's, what's holding you back or what's, what's slowing you down a little bit? There's either a book or a YouTube video that has the answer to your problem. There's a book or a YouTube video that has the answer to your problems. So just think about that. Uh, and then get used to using YouTube so you have it where you have your channels favorited and you have people that you're subscribed to and that you get their, you know, you're on their regular schedule. You'll start eventually, you know, I used to live and die by watching TV every morning. I would have ESPN on. I used to watch the news until that got ultra depressing years ago. Uh, and even then I started watching Netflix and I'd watch Parks and Rec and other weird shows, you know, whatever it was just to get me kind of, you know, happy in the morning. Cause I was like, man, I just need something that's kind of cheerful. But then I started realizing what an opportunity I was missing out on where I could actually be learning something. And there's actually a lot of stuff on there that's pretty entertaining while you're learning it. So so just think about getting it into your routine. Maybe you do one YouTube video a week to start out with. Maybe your goal is this year, I'm going to watch 52 TED Talks, right? One TED Talk a week. Wherever I'm at, I'm going to watch one TED Talk, 18 minutes that could possibly change my life. Okay. I think that's, that's a really, um, I want to kind of stick on that moment for a second. I think oftentimes one of the biggest challenges we face is saying, if I can't do, especially exercise, if I can't get 20 minutes in, then I'm not going to do it at all. If I can't get 10 minutes of YouTube in, I'm just, I, I'm not going to do it at all. So I think, Brennan, can you talk about what if your morning just gets off or you're on vacation or do you do all of these? Do you pick a few? Um, how do people start if all of these feel like a lot to take on all at once? Yeah, look at the list and think about the one or two that's gonna make the biggest impact in your world right now. So let's say that you wake up every morning at 7 a.m. right now and you go, you know what? Uh, I don't care. I'm exhausted. I've got 17 kids, four dogs. I have all this craziness and it's just not realistic in my life to dedicate an hour, an hour and 15, an hour and a half, two hours every morning to making sure that I have amazing life and, and an amazing, you know, physical and mental well-being. Then if you're starting out small, just pick the one that you think is going to have the biggest impact. So on mine, the, the really kind of in the order of, of all of them, that was the hardest one to kind of implement. As I said, the thank you cards came later, right? Those took a while for me to, to really get the, them into full practice because I didn't make it, and Tiriana, what, what you, we brought up here was a really good point. I didn't make it convenient enough, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd have the note cards, but then I wouldn't have the, um, I wouldn't have the, the, the uh, stamps. I wouldn't have the uh, addresses. So I would do them, they would sit there on the thing and I'd forget to mail them and then I'd feel like, eh, why am I even doing this? So a lot of it is creating that environment. The second biggest piece about mastering the morning, and again, 
looking at this is you've got to make it pleasant. You've got to make it so enjoyable that it becomes something that you live for. And again, remember when I talked about earlier, the limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. you've been told so long that getting up is tough. Every time you bring up waking up early, people are like, oh, oh, oh that's so hard. It's so tough. So it's been embedded into your mind your entire life. Because when you were younger, most of us, you had some parent there that was yelling at you or somebody was yelling at you to get out of bed and get your butt to school or get to somewhere. And so you got into your head that getting up is negative. And it's a hard habit to break. But it's where all of the success is, is changing that mindset where, man, what a great life I have, where I have the opportunity to actually get up early, have two hours of peace and quiet, 20 minutes, five minutes, whatever you're going to start out with, two hours of peace and quiet before the world goes absolutely buck wild like it is right now and on fire. And before my clients start calling me, kids start yelling at me, things start breaking, all of these things start happening. I can treasure that moment. It's the only personal time that I really get that's just for me. Well, that's, that's, that's a powerful point. And I, I would say that was one of my biggest ahas when I started Morning Mastery is I was a person that was very easily, I would push myself to the side in order to pour into others longer. Yeah. What I realized is I was burning myself out, exhausted. And so one of the biggest switches is I have to put my safety mask on before assisting others, right? Just like we're in a plane. I have to take care of myself if I truly want to do what I feel like I'm wired to do, which is help others. Yeah, beautifully said. Yeah, you hear it all the time, right? Right. Uh, I'm too busy. My, I have too much to do. I'm too tired. I'm too this. I'm too that. You're just, again, talking about affirmations, you're telling your body what to believe. So, so yeah, think about that. So in the morning, making that environment really pleasant, that's the best word I can think about. So for me, it's, it's you know, I turn on the kettle, I don't drink coffee, but if you drink coffee, have the coffee preset, have it come on. So you have that, that smell. For me, I turn on the kettle, I make some green tea, have a little bit of lemon, sit down in my, my super comfy meditation chair, I have a blanket because I get cold and that's just how I am. I have a little blanket that I wrap around me. I start going into this whole process and oh, and I sometimes I'll light a candle if for whatever reason I'm on a super weird day, but right, light a candle, make it a, a full expo experience and it's nice, right? It's nice. So they say, some of us have heard that it takes 21 days to build a habit. It's actually, it takes 60 days until the habit doesn't even be, till you miss wanting to do it. So it's just statistically, they've looked at everything that says it takes 60 days before you basically are doing it so much that then you start missing it when it's not happening. All right. So, so think about that. If I can dedicate two months to implementing this and dedicate, you know, start out with a week, start out with two days. Just say, I got to just try this for two days. It's a game changer. So, mm -hmm. um, and then on the on the scripts, are you are you rehearsing these in front of the mirror? Are you recording yourself so you can critique, or is it just reading them so when you get into the office you're ready to go? Yeah, that's a great question. And so, Chuck, yeah, thank you for that question. So we're going to get into that here in a second. So with, with the morning mastery, the scripts is just reading it. So the script book is sitting there. I read for five minutes, go through it. Um, and again, I try to get as many different ones as I possibly can. But I also, at set, later in the day, we have actual script practice where we're practicing them and putting them into actual real life experiences. So um, for some of us, and, and early on, I'll be very honest with you, it was five minutes of writing them. So I would take them, look at the script, and then write them so I could memorize them because I'm not the smartest guy, unfortunately. See, that's a bad affirmation. I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is, no, I'm just saying, I am not that great at memorization as I've learned over the world's time. So for me, it takes me a little bit extra, which I have to write things down. So yeah, great question. All right. So let's jump into schedule. So what you're looking at right now is a top producer's daily schedule. All right. Now, again, don't be shocked by this. This is just an example. 
You can move this, block it, adjust it. But if you're asking what are the top agents across the country doing to have massive success, this is what their schedule looks like. I know because I talk to them all the time. And this is one of the things that we discuss above all else. Everybody thinks that, you know, we're out here talking about pay-per-click and Zillow leads and ISAs and all of this. 99% of our time is uh, focused on schedule. Let me say that again. 99% of the time, I'm talking the people that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars, all we talk about every day is focusing on our schedule. That's why it's so important. It's the step that everybody overlooks because it sounds like work, right? You hear the word schedule, and again, it's a limiting belief that you go, oh man, more work. Okay, so looking at this, and again, this isn't a seven day a week schedule. I wanted to show you what it can look like for seven days. In the real estate industry, I truly believe that the, the greatest reason you get into real estate is for freedom. So you get to build your schedule around what works. So if you're gonna take Tuesdays and Wednesdays off, awesome. If you're gonna take Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna work for three weeks in a row and then take three weeks off, that's the coolest part about this business. If you have leverage and things set up support to support it, you can do. But what most people do is they work three days, take five days off, work three days, take five days off, and so on and so on, and therefore the results that you sometimes receive. All right, so we're gonna get up, right? 4.30, if that's what you're doing, five o'clock, whatever time it is, 5.15, 6.15, 7.00, whatever it is that you're gonna be doing. Um, and then we're gonna do our morning mastery process. Then from 6.30, we're gonna get ready to, you know, get into the office, get all ready uh, to go. Uh, 7.30, be at the office, ready to arrive. We're gonna go through role play. So we're gonna have 15 minutes of role play. Then we're from 7.30 to 8.45, and and I think the slide cuts off the times, huh? Unless I can't see them on mine, because that's the. Tough oh yeah, part. it does look like that. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but yeah. So we'll we'll have this as a deliverable for you guys. But seven thirty uh, to uh, ten forty five, you're going to be looking at straight up outbound lead generation. Now this is where people get stuck in their head. They go, Brendan, I'm not a cold caller. Brendan, I'm that's not what I do. Don't cold call. Call your database call whatever it is. If you're doing coffees with clients, if you're doing door knocking during this time, whatever it is, but if you're gonna have a successful real estate business, if you don't have consistent lead generation in there, you're gonna fail. That's just it. Sorry, end of story. So again, a limiting belief is, I don't need to make cold calls. I wanna build my entire business by making relationships. Well, unless I'm scientifically baffled by this by this equation you have to talk to people to build relationships that's that's a key component of the business and what that's called is prospecting right so build your business by referral but it's hard to get a referral if you don't talk to anybody okay so think about that um, then 10 45 to 11 you're going to take a break go outside, go get some water, clear your mind. Okay. 11 o'clock or excuse me, 11 to 12, you're going to be doing your lead follow-up, right? So every day lead follow-up 12 to 1230 role play, live role play. So if you need a role play partner, there's, if you go on Facebook right now, there is, there are groups called live role play partners. I think it's something like that. Be careful because it might be a different type of group than you're thinking, but make sure you put real estate in there. Because, yeah, that could be get a real <laughs> funky group. Um, so there is a live role play partner group that are, that are people on there every day going, I'm looking for somebody for central standard time from X, Y, Z to X time. Uh, I'll try to send out the link after this because I, I, I know there's, there's never an excuse for somebody that's out there looking for role play. Now, we offer it, uh, you know, in our office every day from 12 to 1230. We also offer it to the entire world on Thursdays from 12 to 1230. So that link is on our Facebook page. Join us for live role play. Anna, why do I need role play? Oh, great question. So I think probably one of the main benefits of role play is not 
not only knowing what to say, but really how to say it. And if you don't practice delivery, uh, your clients are going to see right through it. Right. And, and, you know, but I'm never going to make a cold call. So why the heck would I come to role play? Well, I think there's so much more when we talk scripts, again, limiting mindset, limiting beliefs, uh, scripts can include negotiation, inspection, objection, client relationship types of conversations that also need to be practiced script and, and the delivery needs to be worked on. Yeah, beautifully said. We talk about it in some of our other classes. If you're going on a listing appointment that day, and I don't care if you've been doing this 30 years, if you went over just a few simple scripts and dialogues, that relationship with that client is going to be so much smoother, so much more, more efficient, and you're going to have better results for them and you. So, so it's all encompassing. That's why it's on there every single day. Then you take lunch, right? So 1230 to 130, go enjoy your life. Enjoy lunch. Go crazy. You know, have, have a good time. Just kidding. Eat healthy. Don't go crazy. Don't go drinking. Don't do all that fun stuff. Have, have a really healthy lunch because you're going to need the energy to dominate the rest of the afternoon. Then in the afternoon, appointments and lead. So either you're going to be on appointments. So here's the big pro tip that I'll tell you. And this is a game changer. For the rest of your life, let me be very clear. The rest of your life, you never, ever schedule a single appointment until after 1230. Ever. You do just that one thing, you'll, be, you'll have more success than you know what to do with. Now, unless you just sleep in, but if you continue to have your morning lead generation, that's where that game changer is. Us as real estate agents, I hear it all the time. Brendan, you don't understand I've got a buyer tomorrow that can only see houses at 9 a.m. That's not true. That's a complete lie that you're telling yourself, right? Uh, Brendan, you don't understand I have an inspection objection. I have to be there or this deal is gonna fall, up, fall apart. Also not true. That is completely what you're telling yourself. You allow yourself. So I always tell people this, think about this. If I said that it was your, uh, your son's graduation and you had to be there Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 12, you'd probably make it work. You'd probably be there for that one. So you tell yourself that, right? You'd figure out other ways to not. So even if you had a closing that morning, you're going to go to the closing. You're going to go to your son's graduation. I mean, some of you would probably go to the closing, but no, I'm just kidding. Some of you. So look at it like that. It's a non-negotiable. It has to be a non-negotiable. And it's easy for you to say, Brennan, you've got an assistant and you've got a I didn't always, the reason I was able to get to the point of having a, a leverage and administrative support is because I followed this. That's the reason. So you ask how to change, but then you don't want to do the things that are going to help you change. You're looking for a diet pill and this is the diet pill. That's the one pill that you can really dial in on that'll change everything. Okay. Would you recommend doing that same pro tip on the weekends or is there any flexibility in if, if I am working Saturday and Sunday along with Monday through Friday, what do you think? Well, on the weekend, so you're not wanting to work seven days a week unless you're planning on taking multiple weeks off. It's all dependent upon how you're running this. So in the morning when you're looking at it, the best time to lead generate on the earth is Saturday and Sunday morning, period. End of story. If I was struggling in my real estate business right now, I would take Mondays off, period, end of story. I would say, forget Mondays, or I'd work from home, or I would do whatever, and I would make sure that I could work every Saturday and Sunday. But Brendan, you don't understand my family and this. I get it. I do understand. I'm not saying that, right? You want to spend time with your kids, you know, all of these fun things. You don't have to do it every weekend but I'm sure there's times where you could work one weekend a month to start with that would change your business because your clients are home. They're not stressed out running around in the morning. They're not at work. Right. And you get into your head. Well, Brendan, it's weird. I'm going to call my clients at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. No, you're going to call expireds and for sale by owners on a Saturday at eight o'clock in the morning. 
right? And then at like 9.30-ish, you're gonna start calling your clients if, you, if you're you know, needing to fill your database or uh, follow up with your database, and you're gonna go through that. And I'm gonna show you the check down of what you should be calling every single day in a simple, very easy to understand order, okay? So yeah, great question. Then in the world of open houses non-COVID, right? I'm looking at doing an open house on one of those two days, if not both. All of this schedule is dependent upon how much business you have right now. I still think a lot of us are struggling to understand that if I'm in the real estate business, I have to work more than anyone else in the beginning, right? Or if my, 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 I've been in real estate for a couple of years and I'm just not breaking through, then I got to change some things so I can break through. So that might take six days a week. That might take a, a, a totally different type of schedule. Do what others want to have what others want. That's all I think about all the time. So when is your competition not working? Saturday morning, Sunday morning, right? New Year's Day, if you're calling expires. Holidays, right? Do what others want to have what others want. Cool, then in the afternoon, you're out on appointments. If you don't have appointments, continue to lead gen. Now you see two different schedule blocks on here uh, that we've got. So you've got 102590 in your client for life system. Right, so 102590 is on the 10th, every 10th of the month, you're gonna do a client giveaway. On the 25th, you're gonna do a business spotlight. And every 90 days, you're going to do a client appreciation party. 102590. That's the combination to database success. Right, we teach an entire another class on it. There's a video on our YouTube channel now that breaks it all down in, in complete detail but 102590 is a game changer and you need time to focus on it every week to make sure that you're having your database touched, <laughs> touched appropriately. Then you also have to have your client for life system. So you see on Thursdays, the client for life system at five o'clock. Now, again, these are just, you can change yours. Maybe you're, you have yoga at five. Okay, then yours needs to be two o'clock. Maybe it's five o'clock. This is just a sample of what top producers are using. So Client for Life System is my mailers. I need to have two hours a week to dedicate to my mailers. This would be my handwritten note cards, my what's mailing out to that month, my farm, whatever I'm doing, direct mail, eight by eight, 33 touch, I have to dedicate two hours a week, okay? And make it fun. If this seems like a chore, if you have a significant other or before COVID at our office, we would have what's called sip and sin. We would all get together because we all knew we had to get it done. And it'd be like Santa's workshop. We're in there licking envelopes, writing handwritten note cards, telling our clients how much we love them, checking in with people to see how they're dealing with, you know, you know, their lives and what's going on and congratulations on the, the, the new um, job or the new kid or whatever it is, right? It works, but it doesn't work if it's not on your schedule. Okay. All right. So habit stacking. So habit stacking, if you haven't read the book, Atomic Habits, it's a game changer, read Atomic Habits, but it's a pretty simple principle of to get these types of things done and to change my normal behavior, I've got to add things on to things that I'm already doing. Okay. So if you're looking at this, okay, and let's just say in the morning, now, an easy habit stack is where you see shower. Now, some of you take baths. I don't know, whatever you're into. A lot of people take showers. Whatever it is that you do, to habit stack, if you're in the shower, could you, be, could you put a speaker in your bathroom, right? A little portable speaker and turn on an audible book. That's a habit stack. So every time you're in the shower, you go, Oh, I'm in the shower. It becomes natural. Boop, hit the speaker, have my phone. Cool. I'm going to listen to Atomic Habits this morning or whatever it is. And I'm on my way. And for the next however long you shower, brush your teeth, you're now getting to listen to something that's important or that's not important, but that's going to provide you personal development. Okay. So in the afternoon, so every time I finish lunch, I do what? Okay. Maybe it's, I take the stairs. So I get some exercise in because I missed my 20 minutes this morning. 
So instead of doing that, I take the stairs at least once or I do, I start with one flight or two flights or whatever it is. Our office, we're on the, the seventh, well, it's actually the eighth floor, depending upon where you're parked in the garage. So it's eight flights of stairs. After lunch, I'm like, man, I, you know, I'm so delicious. Maybe that's one little habit that I stack on that is a different game changer for me. Heck, start with habit stacking when you leave at night, walk down the stairs. If you're telling me you can't walk down, a, well, unless you're injured or, or you know, something wrong with your knees, if you can't walk down one flight of stairs or several flights of stairs, so do you see how this adds up? That's what habit stacking is all about. When you brush your teeth at the end of the night, you have your goals taped to your wall. Think about how powerful it is that you read your goals taped to your bathroom mirror right before you go to bed and put your subconscious to work. You want to accomplish more, do these types of things. This is what the top people are doing. It just works, okay? All right, let's talk about pro tips. And when we went through these, we talked about a few of them. So, so meditation, the Calm app, make sure it's comfortable. Use a daily reminder, right? You know, it has to be in your schedule to pop up that, that comes on. Other pro tip for the morning, keep your clock alarm as far as humanly way as possible away from you. If you have to walk into another room to shut your alarm off, that's the best way to make it work. If it's right by your bed stand, and I know this from watching my, my beautiful wife do this, alarm goes off, she looks at her phone, flips it over, hits the snooze button, and does this for about 19 different times. Uh, and that's just who she is, right? And, and uh, you know, she's, when we work on mastery to things, uh, her, her biggest thing is she's kind of going through the same process where she's doing some of these, but not all of these, and she's doing them and trying to get them into her habits but she loves that snooze. She just loves it. So to get rid of the snooze, you got to get the phone so far away that you can't touch it. It's got to be that annoying until it becomes a habit. Then you'll just wake up and pop up automatically. So uh, affirmations we talked about, scripts, thank yous. So um, when you're looking at the reading, again, focus on 10 pages, the audible book, uh, make it super easy for it to accomplish. And then we talked about the exercise and the YouTube. All right, so 7.30 to 7.45, we're now gonna do live role play. So you have a role play partner at the office or international, internationally, maybe internationally, or nationally, and you're calling them and you're doing your role play and you're going through your scripture dialogues and your practice. Now, here's the other game changer, right? The five commitments. So this is a tool that we offer on our website or, or on our uh, website in our Facebook page um, where you can have a simple one page, mine's right here, a simple one page that you laminate, that you have your goals on, and then you have, so this one's already filled out, and you're going to be looking at that every single morning. What I look at and what I focus on the most becomes reality. So we teach a whole course on Mets and Habit Mets, but remember, 500 Mets and 4,000 Habit Mets nets you $1 million in real estate, period, end of story. 500 Mets, 4,000 haven't Mets, and then what your goals are and what your big why is. So we teach a whole nother class. That's not this class. We can go into that. Uh, also, the information on our YouTube channel that breaks down exactly how to fill this, this beautiful page out, but it's a game changer. So you're going to review your five commitments. Now, with that, the rest comes down to your mindset. So now I'm starting my day and I'm looking at it like I've got, if it's today being Tuesday, I know that per my goals, I have to accomplish four appointments by Friday. Okay, well, where am I going to get four appointments? Okay, I need to talk to X amount of people to set X amount of appointments. All right, so then I need to have X amount of conversations about real estate. So I've got to have a mindset that by the end of this week, if I don't solve this problem of 100 conversations, 20, 50, whatever your number is, it's over. The world blows up, right? My, 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 it, it's like the old uh, comic book movies, right? Like the, the, your, your, your wife is sitting there and she's, she's tied to the chair and the Joker's about to blow her up and you're going to not make it there in time, right? You've got to have that kind of seriousness about it that lives depend on it. That's a big piece of this mindset. Okay. We talked about the affirmations. So now you're about to hit the phone. 
right? If I'm about to hit the phone, I go into like, I'm coming out of that hallway for the, for the, you know, the championship game, right? The, the band is playing, music's going, that smoke pops, right? Everything's like that. I'm going through my affirmations again. One of my favorite affirmations before hitting the phones is my next call is going to be my next appointment. My next call is going to be my next appointment. My next call is going to be my next appointment. Okay. I love that one right in the middle. I was born for this job. I said that before I got up here and did this class today. No, I'm just kidding. I actually did. Uh, so, so you've got to get yourself hyped up. This is an energy game. One of the notes that I wrote down, right? And I really want to talk about this energy. Energy is more valuable than intelligence. Energy is more valuable than intelligence. I know a lot of stupid people that have such high energy and bring so much to the game that do so well. You see them all the time. You're like, that person's the one that's selling all the houses? It's pure energy. They've told themselves enough to have that level of grit to go and go, go to battle or to, to, to not even battle, but to really just go after it every single day. That's one of the things they do. So remember, energy is more valuable than intelligence. Well, and I think, I think something to keep in mind on that is intelligence isn't contagious. Energy yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People want to be around momentum, creativity, activity. So how do you create that environment, right? How, how do you get ready to do that, right? So I've, I've had the same picture for a long time that I use. You have to create the right office environment, okay? Now, if you don't have a massive office, you don't have, you know, whatever it is, you have a cubicle, you, have, you don't even have a cubicle, you just have a workstation at the office, you can make this environment. People take, you know, the, the little panorama things that you buy when you were in high school or school to, uh, to, to make what a, you, you know, your little projects, and you make a board, Google it, and say prospecting board, and you'll see all the images for it, right? or in your cubicle, on the wall in your office, whatever it is. So you need to have a mirror. The mirror is to control your energy, look at what you're doing so you're continually smiling and you're continually having this high energy level because the day is going to beat you down, okay? You're gonna have your schedule up. You're gonna have your scripts, your affirmations. You're gonna have all of these things. What you're looking at is, is all of the scripts so I could stare at them and have osmosis and hopefully have them sink into my brain as I'm standing there and doing this. And it's highly important. You need to have a schedule of, of not only your, your uh, weekly schedule, but your daily schedule to stay on track. And then also for me, uh, at the bottom, you'll see a list of uh, where I ranked in the, uh, the office, right? How many homes did I sell? Was I number 19 at the time, number five, number six? And constantly looking at that and going, there's seven, eight, three, one other agent out there that's still doing this better than me. How is that possible? Got to go to work. I can tell you one thing they won't do. They're not going to outwork me, right? Right. They, 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 I guarantee that that's the one thing that I guarantee they will not do and make that dedication. And that's how you have to be. So, um, you're going to need a Zoom account, a uh, digital brochure, which we'll talk about here, affirmations, note cards, no distractions. And then by all means, you're a professional salesperson. You've got to have a professional headset to do this at a high level. You should put it like this. When you put that headset on, right? And I know people are like, I use my earbuds and all this. Unfortunately, AirPods don't work that great unless you have three pairs of them that you're exchanging out all of the time. So if you want to do three pairs, great, do that. But you're going to be on the phone, especially in the beginning, two, three, four hours a day. You're in a sales business. You've got to make sales calls. So noise canceling headphone, have, have the, um, the earphones on both ears so you can zone out everything. And when you know when you put that on, it's time to get serious and go to work. And then walk around, create energy, right? Create energy to make sure that you're doing this at the highest level. Now, the next thing we have to know to keep ourselves motivated is how valuable is my time? Do I know how much I get paid for every single conversation I have about real estate? Okay, 
Do I know how much I make? So that's simple to do by utilizing a daily tracking sheet, okay? Daily tracking sheet is by far the most powerful single page document you can have in front of yourself every single day to stay focused on what's important, okay? If, if you were wanting to lose 50 pounds, the first thing that that nutritionist would give you is a, a document to track your calories, to track your eating habits, because if you're aware of it, it creates change. Just being aware of it. There's going to be days where this sheet would sit on my desk and I would look at it and I would have two circles on it because I made two calls. Everything lit on fire. People were, you know, whatever. I didn't feel good that day. And, you know, I made excuses, whatever. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. And I would look at the end of the day and I go, all right. I looked at that sheet, took those two circles and I go, tomorrow, got to double down. I made that decision today. Take that sheet, put it into my folder, pull out my new sheet for the next day. And it was a refresh. Every time I pulled out that new sheet, I knew I had the new ability to restart that entire day fresh again. I, I think that's a really important pro tip there. It's almost like having short-term memory loss, right? If, if today doesn't go well and you only get two circles on the paper, you can either allow it to consume you and then one day turns into the next day and then you have two days of only two circles or you can kind of have that short-term memory loss and move on. That's it. Right? And Anna, that's the hardest thing in real estate is moving on, right? Right. Mm. Once you fall off, uh, you know, people say, I fell off the wagon. Some people never got on the wagon to fall off of it, right? Somebody, right. Some people never even saw the wagon, right? So, yeah. so it's, it's the toughest thing, but it's so simple and it's so effective. But again, it's the one thing with all of our coaching clients, especially on our, in our group coaching program, you know, that, that we have with accountability, it's the one that people struggle with the most because it's the one that basically is all about honesty. You've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with what you really want out of this. And the numbers don't lie. The sheep doesn't lie. It just stares at you and goes, you did this you did this, right? So you got to fall in love with it. Now, in that top right hand corner, I make X amount per contact. You want to really change your motivation level after you've checked your or tracked your results for uh, 90 days. It takes about 90 days of tracking these results, right? You can go back and go, look, in 90 days, I had a hundred, let's make it simple, a hundred conversations about buying and selling real estate in 90 days. And in that 90 days, I made $50,000, right? That'd be a good quarter, okay? Uh, especially if you only had 100 conversations. So now all you do is take $50,000 divided by 100 conversations, and you know exactly what you get paid on average for every single conversation you have about real estate. Think how powerful that is every single morning to know what that number is and watch it get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when it starts to go down, you know, maybe you have an off quarter, you go, Oh, I'm only making $32 per contact. I've got to get back on it. Right? Oh man. Like I, I just, your stock just went down, you know, 50%. You have to look at it that same way. So without tracking, you can't figure out what's going right. You can't figure out what's going wrong. And it's very difficult to have an honest conversation about your business because otherwise, here's what I hear from all my coaching clients. Brendan, you don't understand. I'm so busy right now. Brendan, you don't understand. I'm so busy right now. It's the busiest I've ever been. Next question I ask them is I go, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, what, did you, what did you do today? Oh, I had two inspection objections I had to write up. I went and did this. I had that. I did this. Okay. When did you do it? Well, it started at eight o'clock this morning. So when did you leave, Jen? Well, I didn't. Um, okay. But you know, you need to have consistent lead gen. Well, yes. Okay. So why didn't you do it? Well, because I had all this busyness. 
And that conversation goes on and on and on. So how do you get out of the busyness? Simple. You work and work efficiently to the point where you can have an assistant to provide leverage. That's the biggest piece. Right now, one of the, one of the biggest things I can tell you is you should be striving to get to a leverage point. Everybody's at a different leverage point right now. Maybe you need a TC. Maybe you need an assistant. Maybe you need six assistants. Maybe you need an ISA. Maybe you need 10 ISAs. Leverage is what creates the ability and the freedom to do all of these other things that become absolutely massive to your business. So if I was setting a goal for this year, I would say, all right, I know, you know, excuse, excuse, COVID, whatever my problem is. My goal is as soon as I get to 20 transactions in a 12 month period, I'm hiring a full-time assistant. Maybe your number's 15, maybe your number's 25, right? But that's the first thing that I'm working on is to create that leverage point so I can have more success. So on this tracking sheet, and we're looking at it, you've got your types of calls you're making. So the calls, so everybody asks me, and I always joke about this, Brennan, why does it go up to 144 calls? Because that's all I could fit in that square box. There is absolutely no other reason for it. That's what fits in the box. So you can do 200 right on the back. If you do 144 a day, you're gonna be in good shape, depending upon if you're using a dialer or not, but what have you. Then below, who am I talking to? So a contact is defined by a conversation of buying or selling real estate. A contact is a conversation about buying or selling real estate, okay? So this day you had 18, two listing appointments, one listing taken. You've got your Mets and your Habit Mets on there, right? So 65 Mets, a Met is defined by and write this one down if you don't know what a MET is, because I'm going to clarify your entire business. A MET is somebody that's in my database that would buy or sell real estate with me or refer somebody that would buy or sell real estate with me that I'm willing to spend $33 a year marketing to. That is the classification of a MET. So I ask people all the time, how many people are in your database? Oh man, I got like 400, 600, 2,000, 45,000. I'm like, okay. I ask them that question and they go, oh, well, I got, uh, I guess zero right now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, then the second qualifier for that is if I called them up and asked them who's their preferred real estate agent of choice without prompting your name, would they say your name? That's when you know it's a true met. That's why that number is so valuable, okay? And then haven't met, these are target groups that we're marketing to, meaning farms, Facebook ads, internet leads, whatever it is, to get people to raise their hand that said, said I say that I have interest, and then you nurture them, and then they end up in your met database for life, and then produce deals for you, okay? So it's a very powerful page. All right, who are we calling? What should my morning lineup be, right? Now, this isn't, now again, some of you are looking at this going, I'm not a cold caller, get it. You don't have to do this. What is your top 10 list? I would love to know what your top 10 lead generation list is. I, please post it in the comment box. Post your number one, number two, number three, right? If you don't have one, write it down. But here's how I'm looking at it. Every morning I'm running through my check down. I'm going, I'm gonna start with expireds first, why? because they've already decided to sell, they've already decided to use an agent, and they've already decided to pay a commission. They just had some sort of issue with the previous situation, and I need to be that hero and save them. Okay, number two, for sell by owners. They already decided to sell, they know that they want to sell, they just haven't decided on what agent they wanna use yet. So that's why I would call them number two, door knock them, you know, expired and, and first sale buyers, door knock and call them for rent by owners because they own a property. They're trying to put a tenant in it. They may not want to deal with this experience again. So why wouldn't I talk to landlords about selling their property and it makes perfect sense. They're the most likely to be ready to sell next. Just solds. I've sold properties in the neighborhood. I'm calling around. You know what just solds are. If you don't, we teach a whole class on this, right? 
So my, so if you don't have it just sold, my office just sold the property at 123 Elm Street. Uh, it sold for $500,000. It sold in two days. I'm calling because I'm working with several buyers that missed out on that opportunity. Who do you know in your neighborhood, John? Or do you or anyone you know might be interested in selling? Number four, let me be very clear. If you don't have the real estate business that you want right now, this is going to be the call that you're going to do until your ears bleed. That's it. It's completely boring. It's, it's for every probably 300 calls, you're going to find one interested person, but it's extremely effective when done correctly. So we have scripts on it, dialogues. There's a three check down process. Go to the YouTube page. I have an entire step-by-step -step instructions on the most powerful uh, just sold script on earth that I just released that is, takes you through extreme detail on to make that a powerful call. So check it out. NED, so notice of elective demand, people that are 30, 60, 90 days past due on their mortgage, let's call and help them save uh, themselves from going through foreclosure. Center of influence, I hope you know what that is, people that know you, like you, and hopefully trust you. Past clients, so again, I'm gonna check in with my past clients, make sure I know, hey, uh, you know, just wanted to check in, John, I know you bought the house a couple years ago. Hey, with this whole COVID thing, there's been a lot of instability in the market, wanted to make sure you guys were okay. Yeah, we're fine, Brennan. All right, awesome. And, and as you know, I'm always keeping my finger on the pulse of the market. John, if you were to move again, where would you go next? That's the simple call. People get so upset about how do I talk to my past clients or my center of influence? I just gave you, it's super easy, okay? Affiliated businesses. So this would be people that I do business with. My car salesman, the person that, um, uh, my dry cleaner, the um, people that clean my house. I'm reaching out to them saying, I'm delivering you business. What can I do to get more people to your company? And in return, I don't ask for it. Eventually they deliver more business to my company. And then lastly, internet lead sources. Again, run inexpensive Facebook ads through Command or, or Real Geeks or uh, Boomtown, whatever CRM you're using. Uh, again, you're gonna have about four to 5% conversion. So you're gonna need 100 leads to convert four to five percent, all right? And that's what a day looks like, or not a day, that's what a morning session looks like. But I see it every day, even on my own team. People come in and they go, you know what, I'm gonna skip number one and two because those are really tough. Uh, rent by owners, that's gonna be some work trying to find those phone numbers and I don't wanna pay for the phone numbers. Mm, just sold, yeah, I did that yesterday and no one was nice to me, so I'm gonna skip that today. Uh, just listed. Oh, I skipped just listed. I'm sorry. So just listed. So when you have your, you or your office has a new listing, you call around that listing, letting people know that that property just hit the market. And we know that that property is going to go very, very quickly. So you're calling the neighbors to see if they know if themselves or anyone they know would be interested in selling. Okay. But you come in and you go, you know what? Yeah, I don't want to do that one. NED, oh, that sounds like a depressing call, not for me. Center of influence, hey, I'm nervous to call them and I don't even really know what to say. Past clients, I don't have any. Affiliated businesses, I'm new here, I don't know anybody. Internet lead sources, well, maybe I'll go work for a company or go where somewhere where they give me shoot tons of internet lead sources so I can be codependent on those lead sources for the rest of my life. Think how stupid that is. Brendan, yep. have you seen a decent return from calling in the morning versus the afternoon? I mean, if people aren't waking up re relatively early, how many answers are you getting with these calls? Yeah, so, so you want to be first. Being first is always very important. So if you're not first, you're last, especially when it comes to expires for sale by owners. The only one that that really matters with is probably, well, it matters with, I guess, the expires for sale by owners and rent by owners because you don't want to be there after they're getting attacked. That's why Saturday and Sunday calls are so efficient because very few agents are doing it, okay? So my regiment for expireds, and this can be yours, if you are new and you don't have a lot of appointments, you call them in the first in the morning, so 7.30, you call them at noon, you call, or you know 11, you call them at 5.30 at night, that's it, right? So you can call them three, five, six times a day. You're also gonna be incorporating text message, video text, email campaigns if you've, you've, you've built out your workflows. You're gonna be sending them direct mail. You're gonna be stopping by every day and door knocking one expired or for sale by owner on the way home to introduce yourself and use your door knocking script on them. 
Think about that. Every day I go home, if I just pick one expired to stop on the way home and door knock, and that person answers the door, guess who's not doing that? Your competition. Do what others want or won't to have what others want. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Do you have a, a recommendation on best, I don't know, services to get quality phone numbers for some of these activities? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so we utilize Mojo dialing systems. Uh, Vulcan 7 works very well. The Red X is what I built my entire uh, expired career on. So I highly recommend the Red X. I feel like it's really well organized. But Mojo has by far the best dialer. I don't think it has the best data. Um, so you're going to want to do some extra snooping. Now, if you're not paying for advanced uh, skip tracing technology, so we pay for a company that is the same type of company that bounty hunters use. It's super expensive. Um, and, you know, it's, so there's a company called Nexus Lexus, but it's extremely expensive, but we want to get that data. Now, if you're doing it yourself, you can run the numbers and go back through true people search, uh, reverse address search through 411.com. The whole name of this game is find the data that other people can't find so I can get to the source before they do. Think about that. You're in the data harvest and data nurture business. Okay. So make sure you're doing that. And then people go, well, Brendan, I don't have the money to pay for this dialer. Split it up. Share it with three people in your office. Right. Uh, there's also the Coles directory. So the Coles directory we offer in our office for free. Right. Uh, it's expensive, but you're, you know, we, we do that for our office because we want people to be able to go out and have this same level of success. Okay. It, it just, it works. All right. So 1045, take a break. I think that's explained it pretty simply. If that's what you're going to do, great. Uh, 11 to 12 lead follow-up. This is the other important piece. Here's the, here's the, the cardinal sin I see agents do. You spend all this time making phone calls. You're working, you're working, you're working. I go into your database and I look at the people inside your database and it goes, call John in three weeks. That's it. Call John three weeks. You know how many people you're going to talk to between now and three weeks and you don't have notes in there about what you talked to John about, what the status of his home is. Take detailed notes you want to call back up and be able to build a rapport instead of going, you're going to call John in three weeks and go, Hey John, uh, I had a note here that said, uh, I think you either wanted to buy or sell a house. So I wanted to follow up with you. Ooh, you really care about me. That makes me feel special. Can't wait to not use you to sell my house. Right? It doesn't make any sense. So you're building rapport on that initial call, put every single thing you talked about into your notes. How do you do this when you're in a session? You don't go into your database unless you can type fast, which I can't do either. Um, so every script, I would print out every script and I would flip over the back of the script as soon as I, it's kind of like, I'm out there fishing, I'm out there fishing. And then it's like, Ooh, I got a bite. Ooh, I got a bite. Ooh, I hook them. And then when I hook them, right. While I'm battling on this, 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 you know, fishing boat, trying to reel this beautiful puppy in, I'm writing down all the notes on the back of my paper. That's me reeling them in. So they have three little grandkids. They want to move to Arkansas because of this. She, she has, you know, dot, 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 loves cats. Oh, I love cats too. Mr. Snuffles. What's your cat's name? Mrs. Snuffles. Oh my God, Mrs. Snuffles. That's an adorable cat's name. So when I call up in three weeks, I'm like, hey, Judy, how's it going? Good, good, good. How's Mrs. Snuffles? Oh, Mrs. Snuffles is fine. Okay, well, that's great, right? That's building rapport. See the difference in those two calls? Does she care about Mrs. Snuffles or does she care about you? She cares about Mrs. Snuffles. And the fact that you care about Mrs. Snuffles shows that she cares, you care about her, that you listen, that you paid attention. That's a great cat name, by the way. I just made that up, Mrs. Snuffles. I don't even <laughs> know where one. that came from. That's a solid cat name right there, Mrs. Snuffles. Uh, so we talk about this all the time. Now you're doing your lead generation and your lead follow-up. Do you have a lead generation machine or are you out there with a little pan panning for gold? Okay. So you've got to think about it when you're making this lead generation schedule, whether it's by referral or whatever it is, people go to me all the time. They go, Brennan, I'm by referral. I love that thing. Let's do this. Right? So by referral, you still have to have a database 
of people that you're nurturing, you just might do it a little bit different where you're doing more pop buys and lunches and uh, coffees and these types of things. That's still called lead generation. You just don't like the word, right? So I have to have a database that can support that. A CRM is that database. An Excel spreadsheet is not, okay? So if I'm working at the mine, they've got all these machines, everything's going through. So think about it like this. You're trying to fill up, you're, you're in Alaska and you're, you're, you're one of these you know, guys trying to, trying to hit gold and hit it rich. You're dumping all the dirt in the, into the top of the machine, then rattling it around to shake off all the, all the crusty dirt and all the dirt that's not you know, gonna get you anywhere. And then you're hoping for a few little gold nuggets to roll off that conveyor belt. Now that machine can go through 4,000 tons of dirt or 450 tons of dirt. Your pan can only do one scoop. So I hear this again, fall in love with your database. Brendan, I, you know what? I just, Boomtown is too complicated. I don't like it. It's not for me. I don't want to, Real Geek sucks. Brendan, Command is just annoying. You know, I don't, ring, 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 ring. There's no magic CRM that's better than the next. They all have a simple function. Organize data, nurture your targeted group with set campaigns, newsletters, emails, uh, text campaigns, all of this. So, the, so it's jumbling around the dirt. When a gold nugget spits out of the little thing, you take that beautiful gold nugget, you clean it up, you get it all shiny and all this, and you nurture it for the rest of its life. That's what, that's the whole system in a nutshell. People just overcomplicate it, all right? 12 to 12.30, so I got my 11 to 12 uh, lead updates done. I got detailed notes. I've got, you know, all my comments, my thought. You know about what their color of their house is, what it backs up to. 12 to 12.30, role play, right? I've got to master free throws before I can slam dunk. And I don't care if you've been doing this 50 years, you've been doing it five years, you've been doing it five minutes. I have people in my role plays right now that have been doing it a long time that are still there showing up every day because they know how important it is because they see the results when they're out on that appointment. They see the relationships get strengthened. They see that they don't have to come back a second time and they're closing at the table. They don't lose the listing to somebody else. The buyer doesn't fire them. The deal doesn't disintegrate and fall apart. That all happens in role play. All right, 12 to 12.30, eat a healthy lunch, do whatever you want, make sure that you're getting some downtime. This, this is a mental war. So whatever you're putting into your body is gonna fuel you for the rest of the afternoon. So if it's, you know, if you're going to eat a, a, a full, you know, rack of ribs, it's gonna be tough to come back after that rack of ribs to hit the phones and have energy to go do this. So think about the fuel that you're putting in your body. Uh, 137 appointments continue to lead generate. We talked about this, all right? This is the hard one. You come back after lunch and you're like, man, I don't want to lead gen. So what am I going to do? Hmm. And the first thing that happens is you open up Facebook and Instagram and there goes four hours of your life, right? Somehow you're looking at your ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. The, the whole afternoon disintegrates. So you've got to control yourself. So what's that habit when 1.30 rings, you hear a bell, it's like the bell at the, the horse track. It's like, brruh, 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 and you're out of the gate and you're running for another two hours, right? Think about that afternoon. All right, now let's talk about some lead generation ideas because that's what I want you to take away from this is the value is, is schedule mixed with the right lead generation sources with those two combined, no one can touch you. No one can touch you. So, so social 26, all right? In the morning, uh, talking about Facebook or social media, looking at your uh, calendar, you're gonna look at, and we provide this amazing calendar that Anna created because she is a ninja artist, right? And so you have this social media calendar and every day you'll see letters on the calendar. You're gonna go into your social media, go into the people with the last name E or the first name E, depending upon if you don't know their last name, 
and you're going to send them a private message through social media. Okay. So if today is the 22nd, I believe, is that today? 21st. 20, 21st. So I would have O's today. So I'm going to go in everybody with the, the last name. O. am going to send a private message through social. I'm also going to like something on their page to say, hello, I'm here. Right. So I'm going to heart something on their page. I'm going to leave a comment. And that note I'm going to ask is a perfect thing right now. Hey, how are you doing with all this COVID craziness? Question mark. Or, hey, are you okay? Or, hey, how's Billy doing? Or, hey, how's little Susie? I'm missing Mrs. Snuffles pictures. Where are they? Right? We're all dying for more pictures of Mrs. Snuffles. This is a connection and a touch business. But you can't do it if you don't do it on a schedule. Okay? So you see here, message your clients on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn based on the first letter uh, of their last name. Don't talk about real estate. To be engaging, you must engage. Message and like something on their page or comment on a post. And don't promote yourself. Okay? This, they know you're a real estate agent. You already posted 16 times that you were showing four houses the other day. They know you're a real estate agent. It's about them, not you. Okay. Then we talked about the 102590. So every 10th of the month, you're going to do a client giveaway. Well, Brendan, I'm broke. What do I do? Okay, let's talk about it. Either if you're dead broke, you can do something as small as a $10 or $5 Starbucks gift card. Okay, you can start out with a giveaway of that small. So, hey guys, I'm gonna do this giveaway, um, you know, $10 Starbucks uh, gift card. All you have to do to win it is call in between the hours of 12 and two on Friday. Um, and uh, I'll put you in to, to win the, the uh, Starbucks gift card. When they call uh, up to do the giveaway, you have a script that we teach on how to get referrals out of them. Uh, it's a very simple process and you can go that way. Now, if you can't afford the $10 Starbucks card, go to an affiliated business partner and ask them if they would be willing to give you something to sponsor that you can promo for them, right? So maybe it's, um, uh, let's, let's say that it's your dry cleaner, right? So, hey, I just talked to my dry cleaner over at Planet Dry Cleaners. They're absolutely amazing. Our giveaway this week is going to be, the winner is going to get 10 shirts cleaned for free from my dry cleaner, right? then you're promoting their business all over the page. They're getting that recognition. You didn't spend a dime. Cool. Local business spotlight. Every 25th of the month, you're going to feature somebody in your affiliated network. So it could be your accountant. You could be your car salesman. So if it's your accountant, you go, you go and interview them. You go, Hey, great. Ian. Hey, I'm glad I'm doing the business spotlight. You literally are holding your iPhone. If you want to do it this cheap or set it up on a tripod or put it next to a book, so Ian, tell me a little bit about, I love featuring people in my, my uh, network. Tell me a little bit about what you do for your clients. I'd love to get this out to everybody. They love it. You're helping them. What do you think they're going to do for you when the time comes? And then every 90 days, your client appreciation event. So non-COVID, this is night at the Rockies. This is a happy hour. This is park day. This is whatever it is. In COVID, you got to get a little bit more creative, okay? So with the uh, appreciation event, you either go smaller and do more of them so you can do it controlled groups, right? Or you figure out how to leverage it with Zoom and you do, you know, I, I just had a client of mine who had a, uh, his top 20 clients. He had dinner delivered to them through Postmates. Think about the impressiveness of this. Had dinner delivered to him in Postmates and had an hour Zoom dinner party with 20 of his uh, clients through Zoom, but he delivered the, the Postmates, okay? Anything is possible. And then lastly, your client for life system, market your way to millions in eight by 33 touch. All right. There's a lot in there. So client for life system. All we're talking about is when you meet somebody, you're going to do eight touches, eight weeks in a row, and then 33 touches a year for the rest of their lives. Okay. So start out small, just like we talked about in the morning mastery piece of this, right? If we're talking about really looking at this and starting small, right? When we're looking at starting with an eight by eight 33 touch, we start with a two by two. So every single time, right? That you meet someone, let me see here. Every single time that you meet someone, okay? You're going to think about it in two circles, right? You're gonna have your, 
your target group over here, and then you're gonna have your very small net group over here, okay? All we're trying to do is get these people in here. Oh boy, oh, there we go. All we're trying to do is get these people in here over to here. Well, you see how I'm doing it. Once we get them into that net group, that little tiny bucket, all we wanna do is market to them eight weeks in a row, eight different times, or excuse me, eight weeks in a row. People get so overwhelmed by this and I don't really understand it. It's quite simple. It's a handwritten note card, then it's a phone call, then it's a text, then it's a market report, then it's a piece of swag, right? Your Rockies calendar, baseball calendar, um, where the best hiking or farmer's markets are, any of that stuff, and you just stay in front of them. That's all you do. Now, why eight weeks? Well, because statistically they figured out that for eight weeks, that looks really fun, for eight weeks is how you brand yourself into somebody's brain to make you the most influential person in their mind, okay? Then after that, 33 touches. Here's your quick, easy 33 touches. And I bring them up on every call so you don't forget. Sherry, Sherry's taking Mrs. Snuffles away. Um, if you're watching the screen, anyway. So, so looking at that, right, 33 touches. It's 12 direct mailers. So you're gonna do 12 direct mailers, 12 digital market reports. Okay, that's 24. You're going to do four phone calls a year. So one phone call every quarter, and then five special touches to get to 33. Special touch being anniversary day, Valentine's day, a, a thinking of you, a house anniversary, um, Whatever it is, something that's more customized to them so they don't feel like just another number, okay? That's the complete 33 touch. All right. All right, so talking about all that, the other piece about embracing the suck and really dialing this whole thing in is you have to be in the mindset of being completely relentless right? To the point where there is no other choice. When I think of that word relentless, I think of this. And so here's one more thing that I'd love you to write down. And if you put this up, you know, anywhere in front of you, sweat more in training and you will bleed less in war. Sweat more in training and you will bleed less in war. And I know that sounds gruff and they're like, well, Brennan, I'm, you, you know, you're in the army and all that doesn't, that's not, this is just a mindset aspect, right? This is what gladiators think about. This is what the best of the best think about, right? And when I think about that, all I hear about is I go, I've got to be relentless in my training. I've got to be so committed to my schedule, to role play, to personal development, to coming to classes, you know, to, to, to learn before I earn that when the time comes, I'm going to be bulletproof. I'm going to be so sharp. I'm going to be so ready. It's so you know, impossible for anybody to touch me that I'm good to go. So that's the one that I think about. And then the last thought that I'll give you here as, as we kind of finish up here and open it up to questions is being gifted or talented is the lie that society tells you. Being gifted or talented is the lie that society tells you. Remember our earlier conversation about limited beliefs, right? Where people told you, well, uh, you know, well, Brennan, um, you know, you, you've got to have money to get into real estate. You, Brennan, you've got to, you've got to be older, you know, uh, Landon, you're too young, right? Right. No one's going to trust you when you're, you're in my house completely limited belief in BS, right? Uh, you're, you, you, you don't have the right education. You don't have this. There is no gifted or talented. That's all baloney. It's all what you were told earlier. So those people, so you, people could keep their thumb on your forehead and keep you down, right? You can do anything you want in this, this life. You have to do a few simple things though. You have to master the morning. You have to be committed to personal growth and personal development. And here's the biggest one. You have to stop caring about what other people think. 
This is the one that I battled with longer than anything because I always wanted to be cool. I had to be like, yo, I'm legit. Like, look at the wheels on my car. Look at this, like, look at that, right? And I was so worried about acceptance uh, because again, I had insecurities. I still have massive insecurities. I'm a complete mess, right? But, but I've learned a ways to control that over time a little bit better. So you've got to stop being worried about, I, I, just, I just had a client, they're so worried about posting on social media because they're worried about being judged by how everybody else is going to think about them. If you don't get comfortable with social media right now and raise your hand and say, I'm a professional real estate agent and I'm here to help, it's going to be hard to do a decent amount of business. That's just a fact. So what is that little part in your morning mastery that gets that out of your head? Maybe for you, it's every morning I have to add to my mastery. I have to do a single post on Facebook. I have to do something that puts out some sort of positivity in this earth, something informational, something positive, whatever it might be. So get out of your own way, right? That's, that's the biggest piece there. So, so as we, as I have one more point I wanted to share here, if it lets me, there we go. All right. So action changes things. So I hope you took at least one thing from this course. Now, if you're going to write it down, great. I'd love to see it in the chat box. So now that you've learned all of these different techniques, what's one, because again, Learning without implementation is stupidity. I know people that come to hours and hours of classes and don't do anything with it. So the reason I always finish with this slide is what is the one thing you're going to take away from this class and implement? So put that in the chat screen. I want to talk about a few of them. So think about that. So um, also, if you found any of this valuable and you're interested in our elite group coaching, so we have an amazing course. Um, you get $50 off of your first three months for being on this webinar. If you want to focus on accountability, if you want to focus on your morning mastery, if you want to be around a group of people, a tribe that are really, really motivated and want to be a community that helps you to get to that next level, then you're going to love this course. So, um, and I believe we're going to put a link in there, correct, Anna, on where they can go for sign up information. Yep, so I just put the link in the chat box. Yep, so she put the link in the chat box. And then lastly, if you have any questions, I get questions all the time. I'm super happy to help. Please feel free to find us on Facebook. It's Brendan Bardick Real Estate Coaching. Uh, shouldn't be that hard. There's not any other Brendan Bardicks out there. Um, and then join our Facebook group. We have tons of free resources on there. And then on our public page, leave us a nice review. If you got any value out of this, we thrive off of your feedback. Um, and I appreciate all of you guys. And as always, I wish you great success.